Hey guys, uh, not gonna lie, I totally didn't even expect to be making this video, but here we are. So, today, I'm going to be doing a little bit of a review of Clerks 3. Clerks 3 is directed, written, and edited, and produced by Kevin Smith. Starring Kevin Smith, Jeff Anderson, Brian O'Halloran, and Jason Hughes, along with Rosario Dawson. Alright, so I want to give like a little brief history here. Uh, so me personally, I don't have like the biggest connection to the Clerk series because I wasn't around in that time. <laughs> Bit too young to have seen the first one. Way too young to have seen the second one. So, I mean, I got to see the third one at least in theaters. Uh, but I've seen the first two. I saw them 8th, ninth grade, and then I didn't watch them again until, well, today. So I'm going to be doing like a brief little comparison here to Clerks Clerks 2 and Clerks 3. Uh, mostly talking about Clerks 3 because that's the new one. That's the one to talk about. So, what is this movie? It's about Clerks. guys that work at a convenience store. This one specifically is about Randall, Jeff Anderson. This is very Randall-centric uh, as compared to the first one, which I would say is more Dante-centric, and the second one is kind of just everybody. This one, I would say, is more Randall-centric, and if you've seen the movie, you would understand why, and I'll get into a brief overview of what the movie's about. Um, I will not give any spoilers, as to what happens in the movie. Uh, so, this movie is about our protagonists. Many years later, uh, they've owned the quick stop for, let's see, they got it in 2006, and it's 2022 now, so they've been at it for 16 years. Yeah, so 16 years after the events of Clerks 2, we get Clerks 3, which sees uh, Randall have a heart attack, and he just narrowly survives that, and he decides that he wants to make something of his life, so he enlists the help of Dante and Jay and Silent Bob in order to create this movie that kind of encompasses his life so he can have something memorable to give to society for when he does leave. And at first, when this movie first started, I was just like, okay, so it's going to be a bit more self-referential um, than the first two. And I feel like it's still a bit impressive considering that, well, I don't know if I would say Kevin Smith is known for being self-referential. I would need to watch more of his things to make a claim like that, but comparing to the first two, this one is a bit more self-referential, and I'm not entirely sure that it works all the time. Uh, there are definitely certain jokes that were digs at the movie in and of itself, the movie franchise in and of itself, and I wasn't even sure if that perfectly coincided with, well, comedy. <laughs> Like, I didn't feel like it was really that funny sometimes um, with its self-referential humor. Uh, it seemed to get its footing later in the movie, but it's like that first act kind of doesn't quite get to the level of hilariousness that the previous entries have because Clerks 2 starts off with the convenience store on fire and it's a funny gag of everything's in black and white put the stores on fire and it's in color. And that's how we're introduced into this world with color. Um, there are some good gags that are self-referential. Like, I'm not saying that it's not funny at all. No, no, no. It's still pretty funny, but I think that Clerks 2, if you're looking for, like, a good, really funny comedy, like, all the way through, that'd be more Clerks 2 Alley or the first one as well. I, although I'd say that is more like a... Like a experimental comedy drama but the second one is definitely like a crude comedy stoner comedy if you will uh but this one i would say is more of a 
well, it's a conclusion. This is a conclusion of the trilogy. And because of that, there are a lot of things that I can't really say until you've seen the movie yourself. Just because I don't want to spoil it. There are some good jokes in here. I remember one joke, because there's a lot of talk about crypto and NFTs. And I was just like, for some of them. But then there was one joke that was made. Somebody said Elon Musk rat. And I thought that was hilarious. Um, ben Affleck just showing up is a great reoccurring gag in these movies. Because it's like, he's an established actor. I don't have to say that like, the Clerks movies aren't, like, well-regarded. I think that they are pretty well-regarded in the field of comedy. Um, but it's, like, compared to everybody that's in the movie, other than, I would say, Kevin Smith, he'd be the only one that is a bit more well-established, but it's Ben Affleck. Uh, there are some other really good cameos as well that I don't want to spoil because it was a nice surprise to see them show up. Uh, there's an audition sequence that I felt was pretty comical. Um, there's one thing that I want to talk about that is a spoiler. Uh, I will talk about that later because it fits exactly what the theme of this movie is. And I was teetering between like a three, three and a half throughout this film. I thought it was good, but it was well shot. Uh, I enjoyed the acting. I felt that it was a little hammed up sometimes, but I enjoyed the acting. And then we get to the ending, which is an entire powerhouse. So, with that said, uh, I'm going to talk about some spoilery things. So, might as well go ahead and talk about the spoilery things now. Uh, so, timestamp, you can skip to the outro for my closing remarks if you do not want to be spoiled on Clerks 3. So, this movie's ending is actually emotional. Uh, I wasn't expecting going into this movie to cry. This movie actually made me cry. Um, I felt that there was this one scene in the hospital where Randall goes to visit Dante after Dante had a heart attack at the end of the movie. And Randall's showing, like, this... Well, it's just Clerks 1 which is supposed to be like the highlights of their lives at the quick, at the quick stop. And it's this scene where the first time in the entirety of this movie, both of the actors look really old. And I don't mean that. I don't mean that as like a slam against them because the theme of the movie is getting older, wanting to hold on to that youth vitality and you're losing it. Because that's just what happens when you get older. But I really like that. This is like the time of the movie that it frames itself less of, oh, ha ha, we're having fun. No, this movie says we're getting old. We're going to die. Like, this is going to happen. And it's just, it manages to do this theme in a way that's not like either melodramatic or... Um, uh, what's, what's the word? Um, cynical. It's not cynical. What it does is that it cherishes life. This movie manages to take uh, a concept of death and make it more of like, well, you know how there's the greeting card. This is more of like the goodbye card. This is the one that's saying, we've had our fun. We've had our run. This is the end. And it's okay. That's okay. Sometimes death is natural death is a part of life and it's just the way this movie wraps up is just as i said it made me cry because i was actually not expecting kevin smith to fully go for the sad ending and this movie definitely goes into the sad ending and it fully embraces its theme of live life how you want to live it don't force other people to live it how you want them to live it. Live it how you want to live it. Let them live it how they want to live it. And if it comes together, live it together. And it's... I don't want to say beautiful. But for lack of a better word, it's pretty beautiful in that messaging. Um, and throughout the film, we have Dante, who 
whenever confronted with something regarding his late wife, who Becky's dead, sorry, Becky is dead. Um, whenever confronted with something about her, he doesn't want to do anything with it. Like, he's at her grave to visit with her, and she visits him. She says it's a dream. I'm not entirely certain. I think it's more just Dante trying to figure out what to do. Because he wants to help Randall, but he also, you know, doesn't want to hurt himself in the process. And then later when we're watching Clerks 1 in snippets, uh, we get the scene in the movie theater. And it's a little corny. I'm not going to lie. It's a little corny. But we have the scene in the movie theater where Dante is watching this. He's watching his movie, which is a reference to earlier in the movie where Randall says that he was watching a movie of his life and it sucked. And Randall's watching, not Randall, <laughs> Dante's watching the movie of his life now. And then Becky shows up to sit with him to watch it. And they get up to leave before the movie ends. And uh, she said, it's not over. Don't you want to see the ending? He's like, oh, I already know how it ends. And it's the best movie that I've ever seen in my life. And oh my gosh, even just talking about that line, like it's really good. <laughs> um, so this is definitely a movie that will get really emotional. So I'm going to go ahead and transition back over to the conclusion, the non-spoilerly conclusion. And I'll reiterate what I just said for those that were not listening to the spoiler section. This is a movie that will get you emotional. Um, because it manages to do its themes very well. And I was pleasantly surprised because, as I said, I was I was kind of teetering between three, three and a half, and the ending came about, and I was like, okay, this is a bit better. This is a bit better than I was expecting. So I got to give it credit where credit's due. This is a pretty good movie. I don't know why people were saying it's bad. Uh, but yeah, it just came out today, to my knowledge. I'm pretty sure it just came out today. So I'm going to say that this is worth seeing. I don't know if you need to see it in theaters, but I would say it's worth seeing whenever you can. Um, I mean, if you can see it in theaters and it's at a cheap price, because I was able to see it for 10 bucks instead of 20. <laughs> but if you can see it for a good price, go see it. Uh, if you want to wait till streaming, I mean, I'm not going to tell you that this is one that you need to go see in theaters. But I mean, this is a love letter to theater to cinema, really. So, I mean, if you want to, there you go. If you don't want to, there you go. One way or another, this is a movie that I think you should watch. If you enjoyed the first two, this is fun, this is funny, and it has a really good core theme to take away from it. So, in conclusion, watch it. <laughs> However you want to watch it, watch it. Um, but yeah, that's all I have to say about the movie. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I was surprised that I thoroughly enjoyed it because I still like the second movie. I thought I was going to like the second movie more. I think I'm about even on both. Um, so yeah, that's going to be my review for Clerks 3. Uh, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll be back with Pearl probably this Friday, if not Later, it depends on whether or not my dad wants to go see it. So, Pearl, there will be a review for Pearl. And I will also talk about X because I did not talk about X when it came out. And I did go see it in theaters. So, more on that when it comes. Alright, so as per usual, have a great one.